Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Um, okay, so I'm a little bit more organized this time. Um, we're gonna do a totally hooked section. Yes, I have it written down. <laughs> totally hooked in the basket, on the wheel, RJ's World, and in the farmhouse. If you know me at all, you know I have to have a list or I'll forget what I've told you and what I haven't. So, um, this podcast is going to have be a little bit different because this week I worked like 80 hours. Now, what I do for a living is I work for a company that keeps mentally challenged people in their own home. So I manage an entire house, meaning I take care of all the staffing issues, all the coronavirus stuff. Um, all her medical appointments, getting her meds in, anything that she needs from her grocery shopping all the way down to she needs a new remote for the CD player. So I manage her whole house. Um, then on top of that, once every, I think it's 10 weeks or 11 weeks, I'm on call. So I have an extra phone. And that one I'll have to answer to, which you guys know, I always check them. And if I have to take a call, I will stop and do. So, um, with that thought in mind, 80 hours, when I say I did 80 hours this week, I'm recording this Friday morning. It's really early because my schedule is all off, my body schedule. Um, roommates already left to go to work, so I don't... I have a good time. I have coffee. I've taken the dogs out. It's a perfect time to record. My plan was actually to record on Mondays, but um, yeah. So, and also when I say I'm at work for 80 hours, you have to understand I sleep there. When I clocked in Monday, I didn't get off until Thursday. Yeah. So the dogs were with RJ <clears throat> because that's the biggest part of the week. I normally only work Tuesday um, at 3 o'clock to Thursday at 3 o'clock. And that's 48 hours. And that's my standard week. And then I have stuff I have to do. Reports, um, uh, her budget, stuff like that. Um, approve everybody's pay in the house. But I get a separate hour and that's my they call it a PM hour, uh, but it's just a bookkeeping hour that I do all the computer stuff. So um, I also do house visits and make sure that the staff is doing what they're supposed to do. So I pop in and out all month long. Um, this week she was so confused because I was just there forever. <laughs> she woke up, I think the third morning. And she just looked at me and I looked at her and I said, yep. I said, I'll be playing here all week. <laughs> she just was like, you're crazy. <laughs> so anyway, um, 80 hours is a long time. So I didn't get a whole lot um, done done, but I did get some stuff done. So might make for a short podcast, but I'm long winded. So yeah, you know how, what you're going to get. It is what it is. All right, so we're going to start with Totally Hooked. I did finish one project. Um, I do take my crochet with me to work, but I can't take my wheel. So, yeah. All right, as you guys know, I was working on like a chalet or cowl. I don't, I didn't know what it was going to be, but I finished it. But there's an issue. <laughs> so, here is, and this this pattern is really stretchy, this stitch. So please, please don't think that this is small. It's just made to go around my shoulders. And as you can tell, it stretches plenty. But, and it, it's really cute. Um, I like it. I haven't woven in my ends, okay? So I've got two ends to weave in on this. Now, the issue. First off, y'all know that I spun two skeins of yarn one was smaller than the other anyway I hand spun it then I made it and this was a something for me challenge from last year at Wolfest so um yeah okay so I love the merino and that's the white part it is super soft 
oh my gosh, next to the skin. Um, after I used up all the white to make it as big as I was going to, I honestly thought that I would make it a little bit longer, a little more of a, uh, uh, I wanted to put a little bit more of a puffy neck. Does that make sense? As I got going, I was like, oh, I could put like a, a big droopy neck on it. And I do have this much of the Picora left. And I could have done that. But the issue. First off, Picora is a very slick fiber. And it doesn't have like a lot of crimp. It has crimp, but it doesn't have a lot. So the slicker the fiber, the more twist you have to put on it. I think the amount of twist you had to put on that to make a great yarn um, because it is amazing don't don't get me wrong I mean this stuff is absolutely beautiful I love it but um, if you take the yarn okay we'll do it with this um, and put it on your hand it is next to the skin soft but if you look at the kind of shirts that I wear they're all open necked I don't, it's me. I've never worn anything that covers up my cross. And I just, I, I don't know. Um, I have a few shirts that come up, but they're super soft. This is super soft to your hand. It is next to, this, to the skin. I, I would make mittens or something out of this. But for me, when I go like this, it's itchy um so i don't even normally wear my hair down i've just now gotten to where i'll leave it down a lot i used to just put it down for the podcast but i used to twist it up and put it on top of my head because it's long and and it's not long long but it's long enough that it gets around my neck um when I go to bed, I always pull it over to the side like this and sleep, you know, on this side or that side. I don't know. Um, and my hair is not itchy, itchy. It's all right. I mean, I have thicker, coarser hair, but it's still not like itchy, itchy. So it's just me and I don't wear a lot up around my neck. Um, turtlenecks drive me crazy. So um i just it's my skin right here and this where this hits um across the back of the neck and around even this right here is making this itch so just holding it up there so yeah and i tried to make it open necked but it's still the fact that it touched here makes me itchy so um yeah i may end up giving that away just because I really don't think I can wear it but we'll see I, I I know it was a for me challenge and I did make it for me but in the end if I'm not gonna wear it I'm not gonna keep it so um, and I do have this much pygora left so I might make me something out of these like some fingerless mitts something that doesn't take a whole lot of yardage because this is fine this is not so fine so but it is beautiful yarn and the pygora is amazing would i work with it again depending on the project um it's the first time i've ever spun any so you know just depending on where i was going to put the project on for me i would gladly do it as a consignment project you know if somebody said hey i want a pygora sweater or i want a pygora hat or whatever oh i would be more than will willing to work with it again it's an amazing fiber it's just not for my neck just saying so okay that is my totally hooked um that's the one thing that i finished in the basket okay so y'all are gonna laugh at me now i had all this wonderful yarn left from my sampler basket which is amazing you guys know that i did it from annie's and it's all acrylic it's uh that premier 
um, anti-pilling yeah, with um, Snow White, Mist, Donahue, and Steel. So, I had all that left over, and I had decided I was going to start um, a shawl or a poncho or whatever. I didn't know. I was just pretty much guessing the yardage, going to break it in half and make a front and a back rectangle and put it, sew them together. So I had started this, okay, and the stitch that I had used to make that little rib thing was I just double crocheted in the back loop, okay, so it's not a hard stitch, but when you see your V, let's see, then you're just going to use the back loop back here where my finger is. And you're going to go through the top. You'll do just a double crochet. But you go through the top, pick up the back loop, and double crochet all the way across. And that, every time you turn it, you're doing the back loop. That's what makes that ribbed looking pattern. Okay. So, crochet is pretty simple. Um, you just have to know where to put the hook. So, I was doing that just because I wanted some texture. and I don't know. I didn't want to single crochet it because it takes so long. Double crochet goes faster. I actually thought about treble, but it looked too cattywampus. You know, it looked too open. So this looked pretty good. Thought I'll just do that. And then each square will grade and I'll do half the white, half the mist, half the Donahue, and half the steel. And make two rectangles, sew them together. If you crochet it all, I don't know if knitters do that or not, but if you crochet at all, you know that's pretty standard for making like ponchos or cover-ups or, you know, it's just kind of a standard pattern. <laughs> it's not really a pattern, but you know what I mean. So, um, a standard formula. How's that for you? Big word this morning. Um, so, yeah, I was going to do that. But, if you follow the other end of this yarn... <laughs> A girlfriend of mine, um, Angora Jane, uh, put on her Facebook thing that she was going to do a crochet along, a cow. Okay, wow, okay. Well, the pattern that she used, I have made several times. And I've actually taken the pattern and incorporated it into other parts of another pattern to make an open look. Anyway, so I love that pattern. And she's like, it's going to start February 15th. Well, with my job, I can take my crochet, but I can't take my wheel. So when I saw that, I quit working on this square. And I thought, that would be beautiful. I had forgotten about the pattern. I just, you know, it's been a couple of years. Um, I'm still going through old projects that I had going on that... I may or may not finish. I'm still sorting through and getting back on that fiber thing. Um, it's been a couple of years since I really crocheted. A good year since I've spun. You, you know that it, this was a challenge for Wolfest last year. And I still teach there. I never quit doing that. And I actually put up the um, class that I did for... I did it virtually. So... Anyway, um, just getting back to it, and I had forgotten about this pattern. So, hers is starting February 15th. You can find her on Facebook. Her name is Angora Jane. Um, one word, I think. I don't know, but if you Google her, you'll find her. Um, or better yet, find me and say, hey, invite me to the cow. I will. <laughs> so, go to the Straw Family Farm page there if you already do. And you can email me and say, hey, get me in Jane's Because she's not just doing it on Facebook. Um, she can post pictures for you and all that. She has a web page and she spells spin, since, bleh, sells spinning wheels and stuff. As a matter of fact, that's where I got my kiwi. Um, yeah, she's an amazing dyer. She loves the greener shades dyes. I got her hooked on those. So anyway, she put out that she was going to do this cow and she was going to use, it's called Venus. No, Virus. I don't remember. That's bad. It's in my Ravelry library. I will have it for you next time. Um, 
oh, I might be able to look at, nah, I don't want to look up while I'm recording. Okay, so, I think it's virus. Um, this is the pattern, and I've gone way, it's, I think, seven rows is the pattern. But there's a whole chart for it. So, um, and here's how I'm doing it. I'm not going to just do how many rows they say. This sucker may be huge when I get done, but I'm using up starting with the Snow White, and then I'm going to go to the Mist and the Donahue and the Steel in the same order that I did the sampler blanket. So, if this turns out really amazing, I may keep it as my make something for yourself project. If not, I already know who I'm going to give it to. <laughs> <laughs> That's tacky, isn't it? If I decide I'm not going to keep it, I already have somebody that I'm going to give it away to. So, yeah. Um, this is how far I've gotten. Um, I still have all of this. And yes, I started just the other end of the ball. And I'm going to rip this out as I go and crochet it all. And I will have that. And, oh, sorry. I've got one more full skein. I may not use a full skein because that's that white is working up a lot because it's the short end. So um, I might just pull out one of each of these skeins and keep one back because that's going to give me one, two, and two parts. So. Um, and then I can make something else with these. And I love these colors together. So um, if you didn't hear it last, it's Snow White. It is Mist. It is Donahue. And it is Steel. And they're all just premier anti-pilling, piling. I think it's pilling. I don't know that word. I'm raised overseas. Sorry, not a word that we use all the time. Anti-fuzzing. <laughs> anyway so it depends on how far those go um i would love to get three projects out of that kit but likelihood i don't know um because when this gets to going i may need it, it's right now going to be predominantly white it looks like but the further you go the longer it is so I may use up all the yarn. I don't know. I'm going to see how much it does when I get done with this. And I may just keep the white and then use all the mist and all the Donahue and all the steel. I, I don't know. So I'm just going to go. I know I'm going to use all of this up. This was only a part. This was not a full skein. So um, it's also a worsted weight. So I'm using a different size needle. Um... I've seen these done, and I've actually done one with a lace weight yarn and a smaller needle or smaller hook, and it turned out amazing. I made it as a gift, and it was done with our mohair. It was some that I um, spun, dyed, and it was beautiful. So there you have it. That's as far as I've gotten on... Um, my in the basket virus thing and I'll probably say one two three four five and a half so five and a half um, full repetitions uh, of that and it is beautiful it, it really is and it is just one of those patterns that it flows it's super easy once you get the hang of it um, but there's a couple of little tricks that things you have to keep in mind to get it to lay right and so anyway but I'm gonna do that uh, crochet along but I've kind of started early <laughs> oh well it is what it is all right on the wheel um, at work I can't take my wheel so yes I've spent some more of the mohair but it's not done it's the same thing that was on the wheel last week just more of it so um yeah we're just gonna kind of skip over that i'm not gonna show you again it's just white 
and it's some that's not washed and it's raw so yeah anyway all right moving on to rj's world okay so the CRRA, no wrong association the acra finals was this weekend was last weekend i got to attend one day um out of the three and he what what we did is him and i went together and bought passes we bought two season passes um which are a little bit more expensive but he had friends coming friday night and then he had me and roommate coming saturday night and then he had some a friend of his children coming um as a christmas gift that's what he gave them was tickets to the finals for the final round on sunday um their parents had an obligation and needed a babysitter and they're really good kids and rj's like i just load them up take them with me and him and his girlfriend were there and had the three kids um the boys are older and they've been to the nfr in vegas so the afr wasn't a stretch for them um rj took ellie macy and ellie get along great that's rj's girlfriend he's had a girlfriend now for mm, i think they had their two-year anniversary not too long ago so yeah two years it's a long time but he loves her and that's the way it's gonna be so anyway but it was amazing um he roped everyone the cattle wasn't the greatest uh he did win a round but his total average time wasn't enough to really win anything in the average but he roped three head and he put it in time uh part of the thing that hurt him was he did break out in the first um his calf kind of stuttered and so when he saw it leave then it kind of stuttered well that meant he broke the barrier that's a 10 second penalty and that put him uh, kind of out of the running but he did catch three head and tied them all down and you know so he just didn't win as much as he wanted to um yeah he's training he's got i think three outside horses for those of you who are new to the take two thing um outside horses are horses that he rides for someone else um we own quite a few um i own some mustangs him and i own some in partnership um he owns one in partnership with his uncle um yeah it it just outside horses do not belong to him he's just training them so um he's got a couple of those they're paying jobs so that's good uh, yeah he's doing pretty good so super proud of him and i love the fact that i get to go and see him rope more often so before it was always i was tied to the farm and didn't get to go see as much i'm enjoying it um it's great to go um if you remember way back when he was in high school him and i traveled together um, and I got to see him rope all the time. Then as he started driving and taking himself and budding up with his buddies and I was the one stuck at the farm taking care of everything. So I didn't get to see him as much, but I super, super enjoy. Um, I know that's probably not correct English, but I enjoy the heck out of seeing him rope i mean it just it's amazing and i'm proud of him he's one heck of a man so anyway um i think that's all that was going on in his world for right now um which is a big thing i mean he was at finals for three days and and roped lived down there they have a meeting before he has to be down there real early they they do this big grand entry and all contestants are required to take part um and so he's down there for the duration uh saturday night i did take him out to eat him and his girlfriend out and roommate was with me so we all just went out to eat it was fun 
uh, ended up at RJ's favorite place, IHOP. Yeah, anybody that knows him could see that one coming a mile away. But anyway, so yeah, we did that and it was fun. All right, moving on to in the farmhouse. Now, I didn't get as much. I worked, I've been gone from the house for four days. Monday to th Thursday, I got home last night. And I left the house Monday morning at 5 something, like 5.15, 5.30 to go drop off the dogs and then get to work. And I hadn't been home since. But the Sunday before, I did manage to clean up my room and organize it a little bit. So I have a little clip. I just took my phone back there. I showed you a little bit of what I've done. I have a plan. That's always a good thing. And um, so here it is. Okay, so like I said, I worked a lot. Um, we're back here in the bedroom. I cleaned out this closet and now have all my clothes hanging except for, you have to excuse the bag and the shoes. I came in last night, dropped it, and went to bed. So, um, okay, so what I plan on doing is taking that, moving it over to that corner, turning the bed long ways, and then I'm going to make me a craft table. I'm hoping that my wheel will put together and fit from there over and then have a table from there to there. Um, it's got this beautiful light, and I'm going to lower that light down when I get things where I want it. Um, the little guns are going to come off the wall, too, and I've, I've got to clean these out, clean this stuff out. I don't know what's going to happen with it, but um, these drawers are all empty, and this piece is going to go. Um, the old radio, I really like it. I don't know that it's going to stay, though. Um, maybe in a different part of the house. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's... The plan, I also cleaned out these, and like the fleece and stuff that you saw is in those cabinets, they're cleaned out. Um, my ice skating bag that was sitting there and stuff is now in the closet, and I have the whole bottom part of that still um, open with nothing in it. I might have to fill it with fleece, which is at the other house. I have the fleece. But anyway, um, I thought that if I put that piece, which is going to be my dresser, over there and then turn the bed long ways um, then this area will be like a craft it'll have my drum carter my um, blocking squares will probably go in the cabinet but I've got my sewing stuff here um, my thread is in there but I thought if I just had a way to put a little thing then I could have like my sewing machine set out and all that and I could make masses I wanted. And then, of course, I've got my basket with my yarn in it and stuff. So, um, this is an old antique. So, I really like it. It's got to be um, oiled up, cleaned up. Um, but, yeah. And like I said, then I'm going to drop that light. It's on a chain. It's a, a light. And it works. It's older. It needs to be washed up. But as you, I don't know if you can see that back there. There's a chain back there. There's part of it, and it goes all the way over to here to plug in, which is fine. Um, I will, but I want to drop it down. It has some give in it, so um, I will hide it probably behind my wheel and drop it down. And that way when I'm sewing or whatever right here, but I've got to find a good table or whatever. So, and I'm going to clean off those shelves. So that radio might go, that radio over there might go up on those shelves. Just because I think it's cute. I don't know. But there is already a radio up there, which will probably go away. It's an 8-track player. Anyway, um, I think those shelves are going to stay. But I don't know yet. Yeah, and my big semi probably will go away. <laughs> and get some pictures of my kids and stuff in here. So... Um, those two chairs right there will go out of here. They're just in here for storage. Um, we have six of those chairs and only four fit comfortably around that table. But when the kids come over, I like to have a place for them to sit and eat when we eat. So, yeah. But anyway, that's what I've done so far. And with my work schedule, that's about all I'm going to get done this week on the room. 
Okay, so there's my little plan. I did get it cleaned up, as you saw. Um, well, okay, my boots from last night. My bag still has clothes in it. <laughs> I came in last night, and I just wanted to eat, relax. It is hard for me to decompress when I've been that long of a time at work because, like I said, I don't clock in and out. When I get there Monday morning, I stayed, I slept there. Um, one of the things is to get up in the middle of the night and check on um, the person that I service. So I'm up and down through the night and getting back into a routine here is, it just takes that adjustment period. I've been up since three o'clock in the morning. Okay, so it is now 7.30 and I'm been recording for probably 30 minutes. I've, that's why you see me drinking coffee. Okay, I haven't had my yogurt yet. Um, I had a banana at like three in the morning. I just couldn't sleep because that was the time that I normally would get up and check. It is what it is. So the first day home is always a, a big adjustment. Um, the one thing about this house is you saw the roommate's bedroom was at the other side and mine is here. I can come out sneak into the kitchen and down in the den and it doesn't bother anybody. Um, I have my own bathroom, but the water isn't turned on there until we figure out why it was shut off. I don't want to turn it on if it leaks. Okay, so hopefully that's going to be repaired. Uh, I'm just using the other bathroom, but I can sneak in there. It's pretty quiet, you know. This house is, is not, for an older house, it's not you can hear from one end of the house to the other. Uh, it's, they're not paper thin walls. They're actually really good. So anyway, um, pretty much just work, um, adjusting back to that. I got the, my room done. Um, I think this weekend we're going to jerk off the trim from around here. I just have one piece jerk off there, all the bottom and around the doors. And then these walls are going to be sealed. Um, I do have the on-call phone for work this week. So if I don't get interrupted or have to go for whatever reason, because that's um, that's a district phone. I manage a house, but that's a district phone. So right now I'm on call for all districts or all houses in our district. So yeah, I love my job and it's worthwhile. Um, just saying. So. Uh, I sometimes want to get away from it and I can't so I sometimes think maybe I need to find another job but I really like what I do so um, it's just not a job you can go home at the end of the day and never think about until you have to go back to work I'm constantly on it so anyway but yeah I think that's about it I'm doing laundry because I've wore all my clothes. <laughs> um, well, all my jeans. I just don't have a ton of jeans. Uh, but anyway, so I'm doing laundry, kind of cleaning up the house today. The dust, okay? Roommate and I are fighting the dust. When a house has been closed up so much, it just seems like when you move in, the dust is everywhere I don't know um, we've changed the filter in the thing um, one of the things that had to be done when we moved in here is the um, I don't know if I talked about this last time um, there's a package unit that's air conditioning and heating okay so it's one big square and it does all of it um, it had to be replaced. It was super old, like 20 some years old. The air conditioner still worked, but the heating part of it had rusted out because there was no pad under it. Um, pipes and stuff were laid on the ground. I don't think it was totally um, installed right or, or like it should have been. It, it worked. 
but yeah. So we actually had another unit put in there and yeah, maybe that's what's stirring up the dust is now it's actually working and filtering out the gunk out of the air. The filters aren't getting t really, really dirty, but there's a layer of dust at least twice a week. So yeah, we're fighting the dust. Um, we just keep using a Swiffer and going around and getting as much as we can. We vacuum. Um, the roommate vacuums when Hitch is gone because Hitch freaks out and tries to eat through windows and if I do it he's just so nervous the the rest of the whole day so um, roommate waits till I'm gone and then they vacuum for me <laughs> not really for me because I do other stuff too we have it worked out like I'm doing roommates laundry today because I have to do laundry there's no sense in doing separate so yeah I just gathered it all up and I'm doing all of it it just works I mean it's not like we don't know whose clothes are whose so um and we both do laundry alike so it doesn't really matter um if roommate does laundry mine gets done too so yeah it works um, dishes, dinner, um, after working 80 hours, roommate cooked last night. They were like, mm-hmm, you've been working, you're not going to be happy. Um, we had a few drinks, you know, kind of to wind down. Um, I met roommate when I was singing karaoke to unwind, when I was pulling 80 and 90 hours and managing two houses and all this stuff. And we would sing karaoke just saying it was fun it was something to, to unwind um and so anyway uh yeah so with covid i'm not going to sing karaoke um it it's a public place there's kind of more people than i want around um i just I'm being careful, so I just don't go to sing karaoke, so yeah, I came here, and it was nice, it was kind of weird, but it was nice, you know, hey, I didn't have to cook my own dinner, Eek. so yeah, it's cool, everything is going fine, you know, it is what it is, oh, I was going to mention though, that, and I might make this, okay, so this, I don't even know what this is, I got junk mail. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying. Um, Crochet World, and they sent me this free pattern. And it's called a Chunky Chain Button Scarf and Hat. Yeah. So, I might make that. I don't know why, I just think it's cute. It, I think the hat is cu super cute. The scarf. Mm, I think it's cute. Don't you? I wouldn't do red, I'm not going to lie to you, but I might make this. That was a pattern that I got. I don't know where that fits in, in the farmhouse, because it was junk mail. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm going to get off here. Um, like I said, I've got laundry doing. i got a little bit of my dishes to do from last night. Um, the sun's coming up, as you can tell, by the shadow behind me. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to get stuff done and just kind of... Um, if you have any ideas for that room, I need I need a craft area so that I can do my stuff, and I need a sleeping area. I, I need it to be my bedroom, of course. Um, I'm going to take stuff off the walls, okay? Guns and trucks are not my thing. It was the owner of the house's son that used to have that bedroom, so <laughs> it was a little boy's bedroom. Um, but anyway... Uh, yeah, I'm going to turn it into my space. It just is going to take time. But that little vanity that's antique, this back there is beautiful. The chest of drawers, it's just a cheap one that they had. And that stuff has moved from different rooms. Um, actually, the dresser, I think, is was the, the son's. Um, it's just, it's flimsy made, really lightweight, 
um, but it's going to get out of there. So, and the chairs are going, I think, into the garage. I'm sitting in one of the chairs now, but our table is round and it sits four perfectly. But when RJ and them come over or roommates, mom comes over, you know, we sometimes eat together. So, um, yeah, we like to have those two extra chairs. So, but I'm not going to store them in my room. It was just some place to get it out of the way and my room is down a hall with a bathroom that doesn't work so you really couldn't see same reason the ladders there my room kind of hides stuff so we stuck them back there during christmas and the holidays it's time for them to get out of my room because right now i'm just piling crap up on them <laughs> i shouldn't be because that's gonna be more stuff for me to clean out so anyway all right I will get off here. I will see y'all next time. Hopefully these are going to post on Monday. So I'm going to go ahead and post this one. But look for them. If they're not posting on Mondays, they'll be posting on Fridays. Because I work that block in between. And on the weekends, of course, I'm roommate doesn't work. So we're doing something with the house. Um, so anyway. All right. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great one. Bye.